Okay, so I'm here with a Ameritron AL80B, ampreperguy.com, also harbachelectronics.com. Please like, share, and subscribe. Okay, so I'll go over what I see here, and then I will fix it and show you everything I did when it's all done, including a power test. So, <clears throat> I'm going to ground the grids right to the metal. I'll add gas discharge tubes. It does not have them. I'll remove the metal oxide variesters. I'm going to check everything else over. Had a brown base 3500Z. So he's going to get a brand new Pentalab 3500Z with the white base. So I'll do everything else I normally do. I'll show you this. Input SO239 has like no grip. Output one does. I'll replace both with high quality ones from Max Gain Systems. Okay, so wire for 240. I always check the fuses. You always want to check them before you turn anything on. And this has the wrong size fuse. It has a 15 amp fuse. It should have 10 amp fuses when it's wired for 240. There are other sizes that are smaller if you have really high line voltage. And uh, someone messed with the buck boost here, so I'm going to correct that. So I will. See you guys in a bit. Stay tuned. I just want to do a little quick segment here. I've had a couple people say, why do you ground the grids again? They're already grounded. So I'll explain that here. See, as you can see, no gas discharge tubes. This is a cup knot, not the right knot. Need to find the right one. And it's a little bit thicker. So that means the socket was bowed a little bit. See, these are loose. So I always talk about how these are usually loose. That one's tight. A little bit tighter. Okay, so it's never a good idea to go through stainless for an RF connection. So the bottom of the socket has a foil on it. And each grid clip assembly is connected to that foil, so there's continuity between each one. There are three grid pins on a 3500Z for the one grid inside the tube. So with the socket resting on the nuts, you're going through the stainless nut and through the aluminum standoff. And then you have a, a nut on the other side, but the other side has no foil. So already have the three holes. One, two, three. See them over there. So it doesn't take long to just add those three tabs. So you're bringing the grid connection for each clip assembly directly to the chassis. So I'm going to look for the proper nut here. And that was loose. I tightened it. And then I'm like, now I have to change that. So anyway, I will, uh, I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. Okay, so I added the two gas discharge tubes. Always make sure there's enough clearance to the standoff assembly. Everything's soldered nice, nice. Replace that nut. Everything's tightened with a wrench. That size. Here's the old one. Here are four new no four for the top. Yeah, I don't use a cap nut type on the top because then you don't catch all the threads. So I always use, I just use these. And if they start to loosen up at all, then it doesn't really matter because the grids go, uh, the grid clip assembly connections go right to the chassis. So, okay, so I'm gonna reinstall that and put the tabs in, solder it all up and get back to work. So I just noticed a major mistake from the factory. Okay, so you have the lead that goes to the coil, one of the for one of the 
taps. Let me get something to point at it so people won't yell at me. That's this one right here. See that solid lead going down the center of the coil? Look over here. I use like a solder tab with a internal tooth crush washer type end on it. And it's not soldered. Nothing. Just slipped over it so they forgot to solder it. And the lead extends way too far, you can see. So I'm going to have to get in there and clip that somehow. First I'll solder it and then I'll clip it and looks like it's been heated. It must be touching at least. I'll make sure that solder connection is okay on the... Sorry again, not a cinematographer. I am an amp repair guy. Okay, so I'll make sure that connection is okay too on the band switch. You see what I'm talking about? And see how it extends way too far. Doesn't touch the front wall, but it's not good. Okay, so I'm gonna get back to work. See you guys soon. It's the extra lead length right there. I was able to cut it carefully. I had to take, sorry, this doorknob cap had to come out, and it was actually loose against the wall. So I'll put that back in. I need it take that out to gain access. As you can see it's soldered real nice nice. Also fix the joint at the actual band switch. I'm going to make sure this padding cap is tight. Put the other one in and I'll get back to work. See you guys soon. Okay so we're back with the completed Ameritron A80B. I'm going to do a power test real quick. Customer wants to see it working on 10 meters. When I'm done, I'll pull the cover off and show you the inside. Okay, so the radio is set to 20.76. Audio hello. Shh, 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 shh. Uh, about 70 watts or so. 1KW slug. Bird 43P. Peak meter is engaged, going into a bird attenuator load. So we got the amp on. Some auxiliary. The settings. Key the amp. Audio hello, 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 hello. Audio, hello, 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 hello. Shh, shh, hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. Audio, hello, 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 hello. Tit, 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 tit. Audio, hello, 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 hello. It's working as it should. Voltage. Audio. Audio, hello, 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 hello. Okay, so pull the cover off and show you the inside. See you guys soon. Okay, so I'm back with the completed Ameritron a -Lady B. I'll show you everything I did real quick. Clean the band switch with the ox gold, input rotor switch with the ox gold, got rid of the metal oxide variasters. Grid connection points are now connected directly to the chassis. Change that nut to the proper one underneath the socket. Now they're all nice and tight. Top ones are nice and tight. Added the two gas discharge tubes. Air variable capacitors look nice and clean, but the screws were loose, so I tightened those. Fixed the tap connection point over here. That was a big, big mistake from the factory. That's all set. The uh, 15 meter input circuit tuning was like way off. I could only get it to do about 200 watts on 15 meters so now it's nice and flat. I always tune it more towards 15 because I've had problems in the past with this choke having a serious resonance on 17. So I, I advise people to stay off 17. It's up to them if they want to listen or not. Up to the customer. So change the parasitic suppressor resistor. The other one was damaged. Move on to this side. Clean the TR slash bias relay. See the new SO239s for max gain systems. Teflon dielectric material. Great connectors. Clean the soft start relay. Retap the buck boost. Now it's proper. Customer said he has 241. So in that, in that case, it's E to 1, F to 2. Also replace this connection over here and cleaned the two other holes. You know, if it's 120, then you go here to here, here to here, but this is wired for 240. But the proper size fuses in it has 10 amp fuses, 10 amp fast blow. 
this is a 2 amp slow blow if you don't already know that and uh, that's about it snugged up on the bias transistor screw uh, nut over here and um, I think that is about it oh a customer wanted me to show him how to plug a tube in okay so he's a local guy and he has to order a tube so to take it out I'll say how to take it out first so you take the screw out there's an internal tooth lock washer underneath the screw so screw goes through that lock washer then goes through the ring terminal into this anode cap okay so you take that out don't lose any of it you unscrew screw for the anode dissipating cap and you pull that off and then you pull the tube straight out carefully cup your hand around the tube like that so then to put the tube in you have the two pins they will only fit in one way you know one configuration of the holes so you just turn it you can look at, at it from an angle and then you turn it till you get them to line up and you carefully push it in till the tube's fully seated you slide the anode dissipating cap over the nipple till it's fully seated bottoms out and then snug up on that set screw and then reinstall the ring terminal to the anode dissipating cap by putting you have the screw goes through the internal tooth washer lock washer and then through the ring terminal into the anode dissipating cap and you want the this part of the ring terminal facing up so so there's no clearance issue okay so and then you snug that up and that's about it hope I explained that well enough <laughs> okay so again thank you for watching it's amprepairguy.com and also harbachelectronics.com please like share and subscribe I have I think an SP220 to do, to do tomorrow so stay tuned for that it never ends so I have to go ship some hardbot kits now so see you guys soon 73